students welcome to my channel in this video i am going to clear all the basic concepts related with the units and measurements so let's start as we know physics is a quantitative science where we measure various physics quantities during experiments then it is very important to express them with the some standards so it for example in our day to day life we need to measure a number of quantities like a size of object volume of liquid amount of matter weight of vegetable or fruits body temperature length of cloth anything okay so whenever you measure a any quantity it is very important to keep with them or express them with the some unit what is unit the reference standard used for the measurement of a physical quantity is called the unit of physical quantity so if you measure milk in terms of liter this is called reference standard and we call it as a unit so there are various systems of units namely cgs mks and fes and one more is their si system which is very uh, familiar for you first we study these three basic uh, systems of units then we proceed to si system these system of units mainly may used to measure length mass and time for example if you are considering cgs system here c for centimeter g for gram s for second so c g s yes, that's why it is called as a cgs if you proceed further there is a mk system where m for meter k for kilogram s for second one more system f for foot p for pound s for second that is fps system many countries were using this these systems cgs mks fps according to their convenience but what happened when people or students migrate for their education for their work from one country to another country they started facing some difficulties because of the various system change of various system in that country so in 1971 the 14th international general conference on weights and measurement recommended the use of international system of units so they considered international system that is si system let us discuss so fundamental quantities and units the physical quantities which do not depend on any other physical quantities for their measurements are known as fundamental quantities for example if you consider length length is a one physical quantity you can take as a example but if we can measure it as independently it is not depend upon any other quantities for its measurement so the units used to measure the fundamental quantities if length is a fundamental quantity the unit measure unit used to measure this length that is meter is called fundamental unit this is fundamental quantity this is fundamental unit when fundamental units fundamental quantity length mass time temperature electric current luminous intensity amount of substance si unit we used to measure these fundamental quantities are length is measured in terms of meter mass is in terms of kilogram time in second temperature in kelvin electric current in ampere luminous intensity is candela amount of substance in terms of mole and these are the symbols we are familiar with see two derived quantities and units we already studied about fundamental quantities and fundamental units the quantities which do not depend upon for uh, any other quantities for their measurement are called fundamental quantities and the respective units are called fundamental units now we are talking about derived quantities and units the physical quantities expressed in terms of fundamental quantities are called derived units means these qu these quantities for their measurement they depend upon other quantities for example if you take a velocity velocity displacement upon time means velocity is a physical quantity it is expressed in terms of other two physical quantities it can't be expressed alone so that's why it is called a derived quantity the units of derived quantities now if this is the derived derived quantity the units used for to express these derived quantities which depends upon the fundamental units for their measurement are called derived units means what velocity is expressed in terms of displacement and time other two physical quantities so that's why it is called the derived quantity 
the the displacement is measured in terms of it is a length so it is measured in terms of in si unit meter and time is expressed in terms of second so it is a meter per second meter per second is called derived unit because we have taken two basic units to express velocities unit that's why it is called derived unit this is a derived quantity and the respective unit is called derived unit proceed further another example we can take that is momentum momentum is nothing but mass into velocity mass is in terms of kg velocity again it is in terms of meter per second so it uh, overall it is kg meter per second supplementary units besides seven fundamental units there are two more units called supplementary units these units are used in special cases that's why they are kept differently that's why it is they are called supplementary units the first one we consider as a plane angle the plane angle is always 2d 2d means it is a two dimensional if you see this object it makes an angle theta in between if this is the moving arm and this is the reference arm the angle moving arm makes a angle theta in between so if you see there are only two rays emitting from a single point so that's why it is called plane angle and it is a two dimension it may be a x and y axis only it will it may be a x and y axis only so that's why plane angles are only 2d and this is the ratio of if you define you wants to define plane angle this is the ratio of the length of an arc of a circle to the radius of the circle you are already familiar with these words see if this is the circle which you have studied in 10th standard also and this is a radius and this is the length of the arc you call it as s and it has a radius r over here and makes an angle theta so it is nothing but length of the arc is nothing but s equals to r theta so the whole circle is 360 degree so it makes only a small angle consider again a circle which makes which have a radius r and it makes very small angle it makes very small angle d theta this is nothing but it is a d theta and the very small length of the arc it forms that is ds in physics remember if d comes with any quantity it is considered as very very small for example if it is a length if you are, you are considering physical quantity length if you write dl it is a very small length for example if x is a distance or displacement if you consider d with this it is a very small distance or displacement covered by the object like that if d theta is a very small angle described by this uh, moving arm and ds is the length of that uh, corresponding arc then it is defined as it is defined as we are talking about angle so this formula can be uh, written as in simple way it is a s upon r because theta is equals to s upon r now we are talking about a plane angle and which is very very small so the angle is very small so it is d theta and the length of the arc is also very very small so it is a ds and the radius will not change in any case so it remains as it is so this is the expression or the a uh, thing you can write for a plane angle and also it is measured in in uh, in radian okay it is denoted by theta radian how will uh, express like a uh, theta if it is in a degree you can write a zero over here but when it is in radian you have to write theta is to small c over here so the plane angle is measured in terms of radian you are familiar with the degree always angle you measured in terms of degree only but now unit now new unit is introduced to you that is a radian for example even though length is measured in terms of meter meter we have a centimeter millimeter to measure small length like that plane angle also measured in terms of radian even though we are familiar with degree so i will teach you in this lecture only how to convert radian to degree like how 1 meter is equal to 100 cm there it this shows the relationship between between and meter and centimeter like that i will teach you how to convert radian into degree about another supplementary unit that is a solid angle remember how i explained you plane angle is always 2d like that solid angle is always 3d 
For example, if you want to distinguish these two, consider a circle made up of wire. Okay, if it is a circle made up of wire, you can express in terms of x and y axis. That's why it is called 2D. This is the example for this 2D. If you consider a ball, okay, ball is ball is 3D. For example, this is the ball. Okay, ball have a 3D because it is sphere. It look like a sphere. So 2D is only have a two dimension, and a ball is nothing but it is a 3D. Solid angle. This is the ratio of the area of a portion of surface of a sphere to the square of radius of the sphere. To make the concept more clear, I'll explain with the example. Consider this as an example. Think that O is the position of your eye. and you are observing some some thin sheet a sheet of paper a sheet of metal anything your eye will make an angle as shown in the figure with the four corners okay so the angle surrounded by these four corners is called solid angle here another example uh, to distinguish between between 2d and 3d okay that is plane angle and solid angle so think that this is your piece of wire and this is your position of your eye the eye makes an angle with this length of wire that is called plane angle that is called plane angle remember means it is only two dimension so what will happen if this is the uh, your eye making a angle with the three dimension figures that is always solid angle i hope i made it clear it is measured in terms of steridian solid angle is always measured in terms of steridian how plane angle is measured in terms of radian according to definition of solid angle it is the ratio of solid angle is always denoted by d omega okay small angle we are considering a whole sphere ka one part that's why we call it as a small angle the small solid angle so according to definition the solid angle is defined as it is the ratio of it is the ratio of the area of a portion of a surface of a sphere the area of portion of the surface of the sphere is how much i have taken here small area that is da and to the square of the radius of the sphere this is r is the radius of the sphere so it is the square of the radius of the sphere this is the definition of solid sphere, solid angle the solid angle subtended by the entire sphere if you take a entire sphere then you have to take a surface area of the sphere that is 4 pi r square so that will be a now omega see here when we considering a small solid angle it is a d omega when you are considering a whole sphere then it is entire sphere then the angle described in by the entire sphere is omega that is nothing but the surface area what is surface area of the sphere 4 pi r square and the square of the distance between them then r square r square get cancelled and the whole solid angle of any sphere is nothing but 4 pi and it is measured in terms of steridian so it is steridian unit these are some conversion i am to going to teach you that is a relation between radian and degree degree or already familiar with degree is may, uh, expressed in terms of theta if you want to write degree you can write like this but radian is expressed in terms of c okay theta is to c so the relation between degree and radian is that when you talk about a pi radian it is nothing but 180 degree so if pi radian is 180 degree then what will be one radian one radian is equals to 180 degree divided by pi and you are familiar with the pi the value of pi that is 3.142 180 by 3.142 gives you 57.29 degree so one radian is equals to you have to remember it is 57.29 degree similarly if you want to convert degree into radian so degree into radian means the radian is converted into degree that is 180 by pi so degree into radian means you have to reverse this case that is pi divided by 180 this is the trick you have to remember pi is once again 3.142 divided by 180 and you will get these values if you don't know how to apply log you can watch my another video based on log table so if you proceed further 
these are the some uh, points you have to remember 1 degree is always 60 minutes okay this symbol is for minutes so what is 1 minute 1 minute is nothing but 2.91 into 10 raised to minus 4 radian and if you want 1 minute can be converted into 60 seconds see here 1 degree 60 minute 1 minute 60 seconds that is 1 second is equals to 4.847 into 10 raised to minus 6 radian these points you have to remember the conventions for the use of si unit there are some methods or rules you have to follow while writing units the first one is unit of for when unit of every physical quantity should be represented by its symbol for example uh, force in terms of newton okay the physical quantity is force and we have to represent by it a symbol like force is equals to 1 newton like that the second thing you have to remember is that full name of unit always starts with the smaller letter remember full name of unit always starts with the smaller letter even if the name is after person okay for example if you want to uh, write force is equals to 1 newton you can write like this even though it is a name of a person but it should begin with a small letter if you don't want to write like that so you can write the capital letter only n symbol you can use the third one is the symbol for unit do not take plural forms for example you can write force is equals to 1 newton you can't write force is equals to 1 newtons you can't write like this this is this is wrong consider fourth point you have to remember while writing a unit symbols for units do not contain any full stops for example if you write force is equals to 1 newton so you should not put any full stop after that unit fifth point the units of a physical quantities in numerator and denominator should be written as one ratio for example for example if you are writing a, a si unit of acceleration okay consider uh, acceleration acceleration is expressed in terms of meter per second square you can write like this or you can write by leaving some space you can write like this this will do but you can't write like this mean you can't write in two to ratios you can write in only one ratio sixth point use of combination of units and symbols for units is avoided when physical quantity is expressed by combination of two for example if you are expressing uh, any unit for example we have already seen momentum okay if you are talking about momentum it is a mass into velocity so what is the unit of mass you are taking it is a kg velocity meter per second square okay you can write like this but you can't write uh, uh, that kilogram meter per second square means half in full form and half in uh, short form you can't write proceeding further seventh point we are going to discuss a prefix symbol is used for before the symbol of the unit like prefix means uh, for example if you want to express 1 meter sec 1 millisecond sorry 1 millisecond so it is a 1 milli second okay which is nothing but 10 raised to minus 3 second so prefix symbol is used before the symbol prefix is always used before the symbol okay and thus prefix symbol and unit symbol constitute a new symbol for the unit which can be raised to a positive or negative power of 10 last point you have to remember while writing units that space or hyphen must be introduced while indicating multiplication of two units for example you can write velocity as a meter per second okay you can write meter okay uh leaving by some space you can write like a like this and then or you can write or you can write meter per means hyphen you can use over here it is a meter per second but you can't write together you can't write together why you know because ms indicates millisecond over here so it will give a wrong conception so you have to remember all these conventions for the use of si unit that's it